2010 was a strong year for mergers and acquisitions. And for a look at what we can expect this year, we are joined now by M&A attorney Frank Aquila. He's a partner at Sullivan and Cromwell and was named a 2009 Deal Maker of the Year by the American Lawyer. He was also the 2010 Atlas Award recipient for Global M&A Lawyer of the Year. Frank, good to have you Hi, in. Thanks, thanks so much you. for joining us in studio on this Tuesday. All right, describe the deal flow. Give us an overview of what we can expect for 2011. Well, as you noted, uh, 2010 was a pretty good year for M&A. It was ultimately not as strong of a year as we had all anticipated. Uh, the first half of the year, there was a lot of stop start, uh, partially because of the sovereign debt crisis over in Europe. Uh, also, I think because the attention on health care and things like that. The second half of the year was really what we had predicted, and it was a very strong um, you know, second half. This year has started off very strong. I can tell you from the deal flow we are seeing, uh, it's going to be a, a very strong, at least first half to the year, but it looks like it's going to be a very strong year. You know, is M&A activity fairly cyclical? And from given that perspective, are we sort of at that point in the cycle where you expect to see deal flow pick up? You would, and partially for a number of reasons. One is, because of the financial crisis in 2008, you had a period of about two and a half years where very few deals actually happened. So to the extent that companies had a strategic plan that had uh, deals uh, as part of it, and they didn't happen, there's, there's that sort of backlog. Uh, additionally, companies have plenty of cash to deploy. Plus, they've cut a lot. And so if you want to have growth in your bottom line and you can't cut your way to further profitability, you need to do an acquisition. So I think for all of those reasons, we're going to see a lot of deals this Sounds year. Sounds like a confluence of events. Let's talk about how they're actually financing these deals. You mentioned there's a lot of cash on balance sheets. We've been talking about that as a general theme for this year. Mm -hmm. Will they pay that out in dividends? Will they use it for M&A um, potential? But there's also a tremendous demand on the part of investors in looking for yield, which is why we're starting to see junk debt priced so expensively. Yields mm -hmm. are quite low, right. which in turn means that it's it's relatively cheap right now for companies to finance th this type of activity. That's right. Uh, companies have a lot of the cash that they need to do these deals on their balance sheets. Some of it's trapped overseas, which is sort of a separate issue, but the cash is there and corporates have it. Also, the corporates that have a lot of cash, they can borrow not at junk yields, they can borrow at investment grade yields. So uh, they have access to cash at historically low rates. The terms may not be as good as they were in the boom pre-2007, 2008, but they're still very, very good, very low cost. Plus, they have private equity groups there that are very interested in buying businesses and assets that companies don't want. So that's almost an indirect way of financing the big deal if you can sell off pieces later on to either competitors or to private equity uh, Right, groups. get the piece of the company that you want and sell off the rest. Exactly. Let's talk about the types of businesses or the industries at least where you see the most M&A activity for this year. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, a broad-based M&A boom, but I would particularly look at uh, energy, basic materials. I think we're going to see a fair bit in the consumer product space. Certainly, a lot in healthcare. There's lots of you know healthcare reform, uh, the patent cliff for big pharma. All of these are going to drive transactions this year. So I think those are the areas that I think we would see a lot of uh, deals. But I think we're going to see them really across the board. Let's talk about some of the big deals or some names that have been thrown out there from the past: Comcast, NBC. Right, which I guess they're waiting for uh, approval. That's probably going to happen in the next couple of months. I suspect when a deal like that happens, there's then a knock By the way, that. just as we're talking about this mm -hmm. interesting coincidence, we just got breaking news. The Comcast NBC deal was just approved by the FCC. This just came across the ticker there. So I, didn't think I guess not quick, waiting any <laughs> longer at the moment, but are waiting for details on right. that quickly. Let's just talk about geographically, regionally. Where do you see deals happening? Uh, certainly in the U.S., I think we're going to see a lot in Asia, a lot in Latin America, probably less in Europe than we've seen historically, but that's really due to local factors. Although I think we're going to see a fair bit of activity there as well, but predominantly I'd look to this hemisphere and to Asia for most activity. All right. Thanks so much, Frank, for joining us Good today. Sullivan and Cromwell, partner Frank Aquila.